Okay, guys, we have done the layout. That's pretty fine. Let's go back to our default workspace. I like that and I will reset it and I will close the library because I don't like it. Fine. So now we want to animate. But you know, guys, sometimes when you have finished your layout and you start to animate, find out like this is too small or you want to adjust uh, this uh, background. So there are several ways to do that without destroying your layout and without complicating the animation. For example, let's say that this background here, the rectangle, you want to make it bigger. Let's uh, first of all open the scale. Notice that if I start playing like this, okay, then I change the scale over here. And if I want to animate the scale, now I have a funny figure here. And like, what is the 100%? I will undo this. The best way when you're working with shapes is to readjust your shapes from the shape itself. So I will go to contents, okay, rectangle one, and I can adjust the shape just from here. So for example, you remove the chain link, of course, and you say, okay, I want 260, that's a round figure. I love round figures. And then here, let's make it a 60. Then look at it. Is that fine with you? Cool. It's better. So 260, 60. Let's go to this shape. And also you will modify it from the contents itself of the shape. I will remove the chain link. I put 260, press tab to move to the second one, put 60. So we adjusted the size of these shape layers. So let's start animating the shape layer here, but let's do something, you know, fancy. So we don't need the rectangle. We open the transformation because we want to animate the shape layer. Okay. Not the shape itself. Let's first of all, try the scale here. If let's say after one second, so that is one second, I keyframe the scale. If I come back to the beginning and I say, okay, I want uh, to remove the chain link and use this one. Look. Look what's happening. It's totally not interesting to open from the center. Let's uh, change the anchor point and see how it can affect the scale. I press control and go snap it on the corner, on the left corner in the middle. Now, if I play with the scale, it's opening pretty nicely. That's quite nice. But now there is more. How about if you take the anchor point and press control and also press shift. So, you know, you're moving on this line here. Cool. Now, if I change the scale and that's what's going to happen, not only is going to scale, but also it's going to move to settle at 100%. Fine. Let's pull it at zero and let's scrap through and see the animation. Pretty cool. Let's see it in normal view. Not bad at all. Of course it's slow. You can start now because you know much instead of one second, let's start at 15 frames. It will give us, you know, less work later on. Now for Tanzania, because we did the animation like this for the background, it's better to animate it with the opacity. I guess I press P, now I press T for opacity, and then I will keyframe it at 100%, come backward and make it 0%. Okay, let's look at the animation now. It's not very good because notice Tanzania is starting to appear when the background did not settle and it's not covering under all the world. But this is fine. We'll readjust the timing. Let's do the same for here. Let's press Y to get the anchor point tool. Notice the shortcut is Y. And then I'll click, press Control and Shift. That is Command and Shift on the Mac. Make sure I'm over here and take it to the outside. Notice how it's snapping on the border of the composition. Let's go to the next keyframe. That is 15 frames. And uh, we have the background here. We are going to open the scale, of course. We keyframe the scale at 100%. Come to the beginning, remove the chain link and write zero. Okay, here you are. Let's try our animation. Not bad, it's working very fine. We go to August. And we want the opacity, I'll open T. But now I know exactly how I want to animate. So I'll put it at zero and keyframe. So I start the animation, press K to go to the next visible keyframe and then put opacity at 100%. Here you are. Okay, now we start animating the lower third. Well, 
it's going to be pretty easy. I'll select all layers, twirl them up because I pressed something. I don't remember what it was. Select damage, forest and the background. Open their position and go to 15 frames. Okay. And then keyframe using the stopwatch to start the animation. Come to the beginning, click and drag them out. Cool. Let's notice exactly what's happening here. They're coming in and it's pretty cool. Okay, guys. Fine. Let's do now the top news over here. I will select both layers. I think they are on top here. I will press S for scale and Shift R for the rotation. Cool. At 15 frames here, I'm gonna just uh, keyframe the scale and the rotation for both of them. Come to the beginning here. Let's do something, you know, quite nice. For the square itself, I'm gonna animate the rotation and put it at 180. Okay, but for the top news, I'm going to do it at minus 180, as simple as this. And of course, I will reduce the scale to zero in both of them. Okay, here you are. So if you play the animation now, notice what's happening. They are rotating one, you know, against the other. Watch it. If you want to give it more, for example, you can go for the background here and uh, let's say you give it the 360, that is a full rotation, so it jumps to full rotation over here and notice now one is rotating much faster than the other one. Okay, let's stop here and we press N, remember, to bring the work area and to the timeline indicator. Now let's play all our animation and see, are we happy? Yes. In the next lecture, what we are going to do is to start timing all the layers and make them, you know, quite interesting. Thank you very much for listening. I will see you in the next lecture.